Hi guys and welcome to List Building Debunked. In this first video I want to spend some time dispelling some of the myth that you'll see every day in different forums about list building. Some things we're going to look at is things people say like the money's in the list, uh, you need to build a big list as soon as possible, big lists are more profitable than small lists, people will always give their false email addresses, the most important thing is the size of your list and I also want to address the thing, I also want to address something for all you guys out there who say you don't want to have to email people every day, because basically you don't have to email people every day. Um, you don't actually have to send a sales letter at any time ever if you don't want to, and you can still make money from your list. So I think that's the most important one, and so I'll go and have a look at that one first. So I get people say to me all the time, um, I don't want to email people every day, I get fed up getting all these emails. And my answer to that is you don't have to. You really don't have to be like everyone else. You don't need to sell in every email. You don't even have to sell in any of your emails. I very rarely do a sales pitch in any email. All my emails are about building relationships, talking to my subscribers, um, giving, some, giving them information. I'll then maybe direct, direct them to a blog post, which has got more information, maybe a few videos, and then a link to any tools that I've used in the video. So. I don't email out every new product that's released. I don't do all these big JVs for these huge project, product, product launches, basically because I refuse to promote something I haven't used or haven't read. And it's almost impossible to get hold of copies of these products, make these big products that the gurus do, because when they're launched, they haven't been written. They launch a product, sell a product, then they write it. So. I refuse to do anything like that. So you do not need to be like everyone else. Here's a list of my recent emails to my main list. I sent, on May the 5th, I sent one called Hacked. On May the 16th, this simple trick earned me an extra 20%. On the 3rd of June, say goodbye to Google. And on 23rd of June, watch part one of my latest course for free, which was actually this course. So in two months, well, that's probably six weeks, I've sent four emails out. This is just a summary of what each email was about and how I made money from it. Right, the hacked email, that was went from the email about, about being hacked and recovering from a hacking to a blog post about recovering from a hacked site, how to, how to recover from a hacked site, lots of tips and advice. And then I did a link to a book about securing your blog so you wouldn't ha be hacked in the first place. Um, the email called This Simple Trick it was simply a blog post about some end of month routines I do, I do that ensures that every month uh, my income can increase by 20 or 30%. It was simple, nothing to sell there. Although on my blog, I've got uh, links to various products in the sidebar. So some people would have gone there, would have seen some of the links and probably bought from them. The Say Goodbye to Google was a blog post and video about using a Facebook like reveal in a blog post. I showed people in firstly how it worked and then I showed them how the night before I'd stuck it on one of my sites and made $75 that I wouldn't normally have made and then I produced a link to the plugin which sold quite well and then finally the last one was watch part one of my course which went to a squeeze page to get targeted buyers for this course I showed the introduction uh, at the top of the page I showed the whole Part one of the course, which was about how to acquire prospects on the page. And then after that, and only after that, I said, look, if you're interested in this and you would like to know more, the product's coming out next week, give me your details there and I'll let you know when it goes live. And that's, that's all I did. And now I've got a list with two, 300 people who wanted to actually get this product when it went live at the cheapest possible price. So you can see none of those emails actually sold anything within the email. They all just gave information and some advice. The next one is the money's in, in the list. Absolutely wrong. This is the funniest one. I've actually, I have to admit when I first started, I had to, I've used this one myself a few times, but once you build a, build a list, you actually realize that the money isn't in the list. I can have a list of a million people and I probably can't make that much money from it if I don't do the right things with the list. The money is actually in the relationship you build with your list. 
and it's your relationship that's the asset, not the list. Which is why later in the course we'll see how people with 500 subscribers can make a lot more money than people with 10,000 subscribers. So it's how you approach your list, how you talk to your list, and how you build your relationship with your list. That's where your money will be. You need to build a list. No, you do, really do not build a list now. What you need to do is have a plan first. When I started, I built a list straight off the bat and quite successfully got quite a big list in the space of a week. However, outside the, that promotion I was doing at that point, I didn't particularly have a plan of what to do with this list. So I had, um, I think we'll see later, I had about 11 emails, follow-up emails queued up with not a lot to sell. I had nothing I could promote to my list. Um, I had my forum, so I set, up a one, I set up a $1 trial and tried to get people to sign up to that, but I hadn't planned it. Now, if when I build a list, I have a plan for four to six months ahead of exactly what these people, what I'll send the people who sign up for the list, um, exactly what offers I'll make to them, what um, premium products I'll be able to sell to them, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I know exactly what my plan is before I even go and build a list. So without a clear plan, uh, there's no point in having a list. It's just gonna sit there and it'll go cold on you. So have yourself a good plan. It's the size of your list that counts. No, it's not. Once again, it's nothing about the size. It's the quality and the relationship, not the quantity. The most important thing you'll find with uh, your list are the open rates and the click-through rates. And you get good open rates by people waiting for emails from you, knowing that they want to read what you're saying. If they're fed up with opening emails, say you're sending out sales letter after sales letter after sales letter, promoting pr the latest product every couple of times, your open rates are gonna fall through the floor. If, however, you're sending out interesting anecdotes, stories, your emails are brightening people's days, it's, it's making them think, um, it's making them focus on their internet marketing or whatever niche you're in. If they're looking forward to your emails, then your open rates are gonna soar and that's way more important than the number of people you've actually got on your list. Big lists are more profitable than small lists. No, we've already covered that. Um, a small, well-targeted list would be way more profitable. It's a difference between having a subscriber value of maybe four or five dollars a month and having a subscriber value of 50 cents a month. Big lists are not more profitable than small lists. Well-managed lists are way more prof profitable. Um, when we have in some of the videos, I think you see inside some of my, inside Aweber where I've got maybe 12, 13 lists. I think the biggest one there is about 4,000. Majority of them are below 1,000. Uh, they're all about six, 700, but they're mostly buyers and they're small lists and they're well targeted and I try to look after them and I try to build a rapport with them. And these are the most profitable lists I've got. People give false email addresses. Someone said to me that they wouldn't build an email list because people give false email addresses. If people want the information that you're providing, they're not gonna give a false email address. And even if they do, it it doesn't make a difference because you, you wouldn't want people that on your list that don't want to be there. Um, the other thing you find is people subscribe, get get a, get a report and then unsubscribe. I've got a great way of, deal, of dealing with this um, as, you guys who signed up, got this course, and then unsubscribe will find out. Uh, too late now, you're unsubscribed. What I always do is, after th three or four days, I'll send out an offer of a, bo a free bonus video. And I've got a, a, I've got a bonus lined up for this. And people get to know about it. And they know that I'm gonna send them uh, an extra bonus in, in a few days. and. It's great pleasure, and it gives me great pleasure with the people who have unsubscribed uh, miss out on all these bonuses and all the other bits and pieces I send out. So continue doing that. If you've got a list and someone signs up to get a report or gets or get one of your courses for free, and then they unsubscribe, make them suffer. Send out something even better. Send out a nice, a nice bonus a few days later. It'll make you feel a lot better. In this video, I want to have a closer look at 
three types of list building and the thinking behind them. The three types we're going to look at are building free lists, building bias lists, and then what I call churn and burn lists. The first thing to realize about when you're building a free list, although it's quick to build, it's actually less profitable than other types of lists. And also there is one fundamental flaw. And that is, how do you know that the person who signed up for your list has the ability to pay for any products? They may have no PayPal account, they may have no bank, um, and they may be actually afraid of buying online. So you have no idea whether they can buy, pay or not. And just by being on your list, it's actually costing you your the money every month to maintain your autoresponder. However, building a list based on what I we'll call freebie seekers is a really easy way to start. It's very easy to get people onto your list. Unfortunately, in the long run, it's not the best way of doing things. So let's have a look at a few ways of how you can actually build a free list. Step one is you've got to drive traffic to your squeeze page. Now you can do that in exactly the same way that you drive traffic to all your websites, article marketing, PPC, um, forums, links, uh, guest posts, uh, hundreds of ways. However you can drive traffic to a blog is how you would drive people to your landing page or your squeeze page. Then it's just down to you to make sure you have the best possible uh, offer and content on that page. Uh, you'll, we'll see in a later uh, video or possibly earlier video, it depends if you watched it already, um, how I prefer to build targeted lists by actually giving people lots of the content. So they read the content, they then know if they want to be on my list or not. So I'm not getting people to sign up who don't want to be on the list, who don't know what the product's about. So I'd rather them not sign up uh, than be, have to unsubscribe at a later date. The other thing you need to do is, as I've mentioned, is have a really good offer on your page. Um, if you've got a product that used to sell for $67 or you've bought rights to a product that sells for $67, give it away for free. Let people know the value of that. Um, if you're in a non-IM niche, find out the best information possible about your niche and give it away. Uh, there was a big trend a couple of years back and it was known as moving the free line, giving away as much good quality information as possible and keeping people uh, engaged with you and wanting to know more and wanting more uh, information. I've already mentioned that um, when we're doing it is giveaway uh, stuff. Another great way of doing it is um, doing WSOs. Now there are a few problems with it. I actually don't recommend that you do a free WSO. Lots of people do it, but uh, I've done one in the past myself and it really didn't get uh, that many subscribers on board. The cost of doing a WSO will cost you $40. So if you're not gonna get 100 people to sign up, then it's really um, not gonna be worth it. Also, you will get a lot of freebie seekers and there is a huge amount of freebie seekers in the warrior forum who have no intention of buying or even if they do buy at a later date they tend to do a lot of refunds uh, so there's that aspect and the other thing is when you do a free um, WSO a lot of people look at it and won't even bother downloading it because they equate free with no value so it could be the best product in the world but because it's free they'll won't, but they won't bother. I would recommend that you do a, if you want to do a WSO to build a list, you do it at something like three, four dollars, five dollars. You can do a five dollar or seven, even seven dollar WSO. And if it's good enough and it's got enough people interested and you maybe pick up one or two affiliates, you can and will possibly, well, you will do 500 sales. And I've seen recently that the WSOs have done 4,000 sales 
uh, 1,000 sales is n not unheard of. So at, even at $7 or $5, you're not doing too badly there. And you're getting a list of buyers. But once again, the quality has got to be good. So make make yourself, make a $67 or $97 product and then sell it at $7 or $5. Another thing is ad swaps. Um, I tried ad swaps once, didn't like it. Um, I found that because I've got, I build very responsive lists. Um, my lists of say, I've sent, I think I sent it to about 4,000 people. Um, I got the guy about three, 400 signups. I think he got me a hundred signups. Some people's lists are just burnt out and that's what you tend to find with uh, ad swaps. You're swapping your freebie seekers for someone else's freebie seekers, or you're sh swapping your burnt out freebie seekers for their burnt out freebie seekers. So it's not as good as it appears on paper. If you are gonna do it, go to safeswaps.com. Um, it's a great system and you can start swapping from, if you've got this 20 people, if you really wanted to, you can swap. There are people on there who will swap 20, 20 people with you. Um, Lots of that you see advert people telling you what their list is about and compare lists and then try and swap. Giveaway events are another great way of doing it. Um, with a giveaway event, uh, you submit a product and it goes into a huge list of products and you send a few people to the, the giveaway event and everyone else sends people to the giveaway event. If they like what they see of your product, they'll sign up for it and download it and you'll get the subscriber. You tend to find these happen, the best ones happen at specific times, St. Patrick's Day, Easter, Thanksgiving, etc., etc. I've known people who build very big lists uh, just for giveaway events. Another problem, well, one of the problems that tends to come up with this is, once again, it's a lot of freebie seekers who wait for giveaway events and pick up what they can for free and then they've got no intention of buying so once you get some freebie seekers on your list then it's up to you to try and convert them into buyers and it's not always easy you'll see within this course i keep on telling you to try and build a targeted buyers list and we have a look at how in later video or an earlier video if you've watched it already um, we had a look at how to do it these are slower to build but they are much much more profitable um, so once again I'm sorry I keep on hammering this home, but if you get the option, build a targeted buyers list. So give give away content, give away a fa even a fair bit of content so that people know that they like your style and your products and the way you teach. And by doing that, they're gonna want to buy more stuff from you. Building a buyers list, this is the ultimate. This is what we all should be trying to do, which is why I recommend that you do it on the WSO forum rather than doing a free WSO. Do low cost reports. Write a nine page report rather than give it away, sell it for one or two dollars. Even sell it and give the money to charity. As long as you're weeding out freebie seekers and you're making sure people can buy and they're not afraid to buy online, it doesn't matter. That's the only thing that really matters with buyers list. Um, buy PLR products. You can buy PLR, PLR products for $10, $20 and then you can sell them. Some of them got a minimum price, um, others haven't. If you find a really good PLR product, said that, do JVs. Find somebody who has, who wants a product, offer them your product and get them to promote it to it and let them promote it to their list. Be creative, think of ways of you of how you can get lots and lots of buyers to come and buy stuff. If you've got free lists, uh, create low cost reports, email out your free list, see if people want to buy the low cost reports, set up a survey, ask them what they want to know next, ask them what their biggest problems are, and then write an article about that. One of my members at WordPress Goldmine had a product, uh, a, had a list of about 700 people who are all into uh, weight training. And he very simply said to them, what's the biggest problem that you've got with weight training? 
and he got he got the answer, and it was something like abs or something. Uh, I can't actually remember what it was, and he just wrote a wrote a report on a simple report covered nutrition and extra etc on developing abs. He sold it for um, seven five or seven dollars. Once again, I can't remember. It was a while ago, and what happened was he made maybe three four hundred sales. So he had a really responsive list. Who he asked them what they wanted. They told him what he want what what they wanted. He provided it and they bought it. And suddenly you've got uh, prospects who are now buyers. Okay, churn and burn lists. I hate churn and burn lists. Um, they start, seem to be starting to become a bit of a fashion at the moment. And stay away from them. Uh, they're not very profitable. Uh, they're a lot of work. And personally, I think they're ethically suspect. So probably you don't know what churn and burn lists are. Churn and burn lists are like free lists where you give out, you've got lots and lots of channels driving people to your squeeze pages. So you're getting 100, 200 signups a day, maybe even more than that. And only thing you're after is quantity of people who sign up. But then what you do is you hit them with, or what you do, I say what you do, what the people who do churn and burn do is hit them with multiple emails a day, maybe two, maybe three emails a day. And they've got one aim and one aim only, and that's to get the people to buy or unsubscribe. And it's a pretty nasty method. Um, I don't like it. And I wouldn't strong, I would very strongly recommend you go nowhere near it. Um, the way I look at it is I could build, say, a list of 10,000 pretty quickly. Now, if I try and churn and burn that, and I'm getting, say I'm getting two, 300 a day, I'm going to have, or if, if I'm getting two or 300 unsubscribes a day, which is probably uh, a low amount for someone who's sending out lots of emails every day, I have to get two or 300 subscribers back on by doing list swaps and whatever, and you through all the different channels. Now, these people, say a few of them do buy, you're looking at maybe a dollar value per month for the people who buy. I would much rather have, rather than have a 10,000 churn and burn list, I would much rather have something like 500 targeted people or 500 buyers who I know are gonna buy maybe every two, like every two or three months for the next three or four years. I've got people, people on my list, I've only had a list now for about 18 months. I've had people on my list from day one. And if I send like an, an email out, I'll get replies from them and they'll ask further questions. And if I send a recommendation, quite a few will buy. If I create a new product, if they're interested in that particular product, then they'll buy. And by building a good relationship with my list, I've built value. By building a churn and burn list, I build no value whatsoever. And it's just to make money. And uh, it's not a nice way to market. In this part of the course, I want to look at autoresponders. Uh, there's three main autoresponders, uh, eye contact, MailChimp, and my personal favorite, Aweber. Now, I've often read in forums that uh, people recommend free autoresponders or even using your own email system from cPanel. Do not do this, seriously, do not use a free autoresponder and most certainly do not use anything based on your own server because within a few days you'll have your IP addresses blocked, um, you'll be noted down as a spammer. It's a, seriously a real nightmare. The reason why I contact MailChimp and Aweber charge 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 dollars a month is because they have large teams of people whose sole job it is to ensure that emails get through and your emails don't get put onto a spam list or blacklisted. Sites like AOL, they ban lots of emails coming through and where Aweber I find are the best uh, is they ensure these emails get through. They're constantly taking them off blacklists and making sure that they're delivered. So just to reiterate, don't be tempted to use a 
free autoresponder. Here is a quick look at the pricing for the three main autoresponder companies that we talked about. As you can see, they're pretty much the same. So let's look for two and a half thousand to five thousand. Mailchimp will charge you fifty dollars. Eye contact will charge you forty seven dollars or thirty nine ninety five if you pay annually. And Aweber will charge you forty nine dollars um, per month. All the Awe all the Aweber prices you have to add nineteen dollars because they're up to five hundred. Uh, limit is $19. Anything over that you pay, start paying extra. When you look at up to 25,000 people, you look at 130 on Aweber, 149, sorry. When you look at uh, 25,000 people, you're looking at 149 on Aweber, 149 on Eye Contact, and 150 on Mailchimp. So you can see there's real no real difference. The one thing that does make a difference is the service. And for me, that's gotta be Aweber. Uh, they've got loads of reports on there. The system is quite straightforward and easy to use, and they do provide lots of help. So they're my personal favorite. Now what I've done, I've recorded two videos to go at the end of this. Uh, the first is a look around inside Aweber. And we look at follow-up emails, broadcast emails, some of the stats, and a few other bits and pieces, and then a separate video on using the tools within Aweber to segment your lists. And that's one of the reasons I like Aweber as well. Very easy segmentation, uh, as you'll see shortly. Thanks a lot. Bye. Of the three autoresponders I mentioned in this presentation, the two I use regularly are Aweber and iContact. My personal favorite is Aweber. I find they have much better uh, stats, much better reports, and much easier to manage. I did try uh, MailChimp, but I just really couldn't get on with it. So I used it for one little project and then dumped it. All the autoresponders we've mentioned will give you either a free trial for a month or a $1 trial. And their cheap pricing is up to 500 subscribers. So if we have a close look at the Aweber pricing, we'll see that for the first month it's just one dollar and then you pay nineteen dollars a month for up to 500 subscribers once your subscribers got to 501 to two and a half thousand you then pay an extra ten dollars a month so you'll be paying 29 dollars a month as we'll see during this course a list of 500 subscribers can be very profitable a lot of people their initial um thoughts about going with someone like aweber or eye, eye contact is that it's too expensive. It really is not. Um, $149 a month for 25,000 subscribers. With 25,000 subscribers, you will be making a lot, lot, lot more than $149. So let's look inside Aweber. As I said, it's my personal favorite. Uh, some more of the things we can do. This is the messages tabs. Now there's two types of messages that you'll create in your autoresponder. The first is follow-up messages, which are these. These are 11 follow-up messages um, that go up off to subscribers who sign up for one of my products. Now this is a free product, or it was a free product, and I used 11 messages to give lots of information, lots of advice, lots of tips, more free reports. So the subscribers knew a lot about me. This is, this is one of the first uh, follow-up sequences I did. It's actually probably way too long. Probably five or six would be the maximum I would do now. On many, many of my lists, my buyers lists, I just use one simple follow-up. And the next thing I use is broadcast messages, which we'll go and have a look at now. This is the broadcast message area where you would create a broadcast message. Now, the difference between broadcast and follow-up messages are, follow-up messages go out in a specific sequence. Broadcast messages go out when you send them. So you, you would create a message. If I wanted to email you today about a new product, I would create a, create a broadcast message and send it out. You've got two options, HTML and plain text. I usually do plain text. However, you can do HTML and plain, but don't just do HTML on, on its own 
because you'll find that people have HTML turned off on some of their email readers, so that'll be a problem. You can send it to segments. So you can send a broadcast to anyone added today, anybody added since yesterday, any, anyone in, added in the past seven days, uh, all active subscribers. And these two segments here are ones that I've created myself. Uh, one is called unopened, and that's for people who didn't open a previous email. So I can create a message now, and it will just go to the people who didn't open the original email. It's very, very useful, very, very handy little option to have. Here you can include or exclude other lists just by simply clicking your peer or your lists. So you can include people on that list or exclude people. So if you're on, one, on two of my lists and I'm doing one offer to one list and one offer to the other list, so that you don't get both offers, I can exclude you from one of the lists. Here you can add Twitter and Facebook. So your message will go out via Twitter and Facebook. Now I've got 20,000 Twitter subscribers, so it's quite useful to tweet out my emails. And you, then you get an email when the message has gone out to let you know how many people have opened it and how many people have clicked on it. So that's a simple broadcast message. There's loads of reports that come with Aweber. So here are the reports. As you can see down the left hand side, there are absolutely lots of reports that you get prov provided with. Um, this, one I'm, this one I'm looking at is the number of people who signed up via web form compared to email the autoresponder. Four people email the autoresponder, 4,319 fill out web form. Information like that can be really useful to know. Another very useful report is the verification times. This tells you how long it takes before somebody verifies your email. So when, you, when they sign up, they get an email sent to them that they need to click to verify. And here you can see that the vast majority verify within two minutes, whereas some people it takes over 15 days to verify. I often find these verification times very useful to seeing how responsive uh, a list can be. If I can get p people to verify within four or five minutes, see here on this one it's 61% uh, within five minutes when i set up a new list i can try and increase those times with me by adding little bits of urgency etc or make it a really really good offer so that people want to get hold of it quickly using the stats in aweb can give you a lot of insight into your list and your subscribers so it's well worth using one big difference between aweb and eye contact is Aweber like double opt-ins and eye contact, although they like double opt-ins, they will allow you to do single opt-ins. Uh, the reason I've actually got my eye contact account is I had a list of two and a half thousand buyers and I wanted to add it into Aweber, but what they needed me to do was to send out an email and ask these people to confirm their opt-in again. So I didn't completely want to do that because I would have lost probably quite a few, quite a few subscribers. So what I did was I imported the list into iContact um, where it was single opt-in. Single opt-in is people apply to join your list and they don't need to confirm. Uh, double opt-in is they apply to join your list and the autoresponder company sends them an email out and they have to click on it to confirm that they actually want to be on your list. I do prefer double opt-in in the long run you tend to get a lot less uh, unsubscribes from people and people tend to be a little bit more responsive. Um, single opt-in, it's very easy to put yourself on a list and then just ignore it and not bother opening. But if you've confirmed, you're probably a little bit more uh, engaged with that list. One great thing about Aweber is the use of automation and segmenting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do finish this video and I'm going to just then record another very quick video um, about segmentation because I think it actually deserves its own little video. Uh, it's very very useful and it can make a huge difference to your profitability. In this part of the course I want to quickly look at segmenting your lists. Segmenting your list is very simple. It's, it's basically about moving your prospects off your prospects list and onto your buyers list when they buy something. And 
And the great thing is with Aweber, it can all be done completely automatically. So here we are back at Aweber and I'm on the My List section and down there, third down, you'll see a tab called Automation. So we click on that and we get to this. Now what I'm doing here, I've got a list up here called Flipping Guides. And let's see, here's Key Reports. Now, Key Reports is one of my buyers lists. So Flipping Guides is a free report on flipping our giveaway. So when I send an email out to the guys on Flipping Guides and they purchase a report from me, what I want to happen then is for, for them to be removed from the Flipping Guides and added to the Key Reports list. So from the drop down choices here, uh, you've got unsubscribe from list Flipping Guides when lead subscribes to Key Reports. Unsubscribe from list Flipping Guides when lead unsubscribes from Key Reports. We don't want that and subscribe to list flipping guides when lead subscribes to key reports. We don't want that. So what we want to do is when one of our prospects on the flipping guides list buys one of the key reports, they go on the key reports list and they get removed from the flipping guides list. And all we need to do is add that and then save. And so now when they buy one of my key reports, they'll come off the flipping guys list. I can do this with all my buyers lists. So if somebody on flipping guides was to buy beyond commission, they automatically get added to a beyond commission list. They come off of the unsubscribe list. It's as simple as that. All you need to do is ensure that when someone buys something, they're automatically added to one of your lists, one of your buyers lists and then just use that list um, as the key to the unsubscribe. Hope you found that useful. It's a very good technique and it's something you should concentrate on and master. When I first started, I had a load of problems. I had quite a few big lists, but I wasn't moving people off those lists onto buyers lists. So for the first few months, I wasn't sure who were, who were buyers. Luckily, one of my lists I created at the beginning was a buyers list, um, so it was there and I could manually do it eventually, but I didn't set up the autom automation, which is quite important. Thanks a lot, bye. In this section, we're gonna look at prospects and how to best get hold of targeted prospects rather than just general prospects. Now, there are three types of prospects. We've got your general prospects, you've got targeted prospects, and we've got our buyers. Now, the buyers are our superstars. They're the ones that we need to strive to get on our lists. General prospects, um, they're very easy to acquire. You can get hundreds and hundreds of them a day if you really want to. Um, but the problem with them are, they may just be freebie seekers. All they might be after is just free content with and have no intention of ever buying any products. The next problem is we've got no way of telling whether they've actually got the ability, ability to pay. They may have no credit cards, no access to PayPal, and no way of buying online. And also, they're not going to be engaged with us. They probably know very little about us, and they may not be a really good fit for our lists. Next up is our targeted prospects. Now, the great thing about targeted prospects is they are engaged. They do know, about, know us and they do know about our products and they do know that the products that we're offering are a good fit for them. They're more profitable and they also want to know more about us. They're curious, they want to see what we're going to offer, they want to hear from us. On the negative side, they still might be freebie seekers. Uh, we still don't know if they've got the ability to pay and also they're less easy to acquire. Where you may have, maybe if you run a promotion, you may be able to get say 100 uh, general prospects, you might only get 40 or 50 targeted prospects from that, but they are still more valuable to us than our general prospects. Finally, our buyers. 
Now, the bad thing about buyers or the negative thing about buyers is they're the hardest to actually acquire. However, we know they're engaged with what we're doing because they've purchased something. We know they have the ability to pay. We know they're not afraid to pay. A lot of people have, have a bit of, uh, bit of worry about buying stuff online. We know that's not the case with our buyers. They are the most profitable of all our list members and we know they're not just freebie seekers. If you take one thing from this whole section, it should be that it's so much easier to turn a targeted prospect into a buyer than it is to turn a, just a general prospect into a buyer. Targeted prospects is where we should be spending a lot of our effort acquiring these people, getting to know them, building a relationship with them. Every single prospect you have costs you money. Uh, so if you've got between 5,000 and 10,000 people on your list, it's probably going to cost you about $50 per month. Now, if you get one more per person, if you're on 10,000, you get one more person, 10,001, it's going to cost you $130 per month. Whilst with a list that size, the cost isn't really relevant because you should be making way more than that. It's worth just bearing in mind that every person you've got on your list costs you money. So if that person has got no intention of ever buying anything or can't buy anything, well, we really shouldn't have them on our list. So we need to try and get them to unsubscribe or leverage them and use them in a different way. If you have an engaged prospect, that's somebody, as I've explained, who gets what we're about and buyers, engaged prospects and buyers, they mean profit. They're, they are what earn us money. A while back, I was approached by somebody with a 10,000 subscribers who said they'd like to promote one of my products. I was really happy with this. Um, I thought 10,000 sub subscribers, oh, I'm gonna make quite a bit of money out of this. Um, I made less than $100 because they just didn't buy. His subscribers probably didn't open his email. Um, very few of them bought. And I was quite actually quite disappointed. Uh, about a month or two later, someone with 500 sub subscribers emailed me and said, could he promote my, my product? Could I give him an affiliate link? Um, I thought, yeah, why not? 500 subscribers. I might get a cup of coffee out of it. I made over $800 uh, in sales. So over 1600 in Total, we split 50-50, so I got over $800 from 500 subscribers. Now, the difference between these two um, lists is quite obvious. The guy with 500 subscribers, they were they were engaged, they, he had a, built a relationship with them, and they were re responsive to his emails. A friend of mine created a product that sold for $197. His top affiliate made 162 sales uh, during the launch and that was from a list of 1,300 people the second affiliate made 26 sales which isn't too bad but that was from a list of 30,000 plus once again one of these guys had a list where he built a relationship and they knew that he offered good advice he was ethical and if he sent an email out it was worth reading now, the question is, how do you get uh, targeted prospects? Well, it's actually really, really easy. And unfortunately, it's, you've got to be like the drug dealer at school gates. You know the story about uh, drug dealers at school gates where they offer kids some free drugs and once they get them hooked, then they start to charge them for it. Well, that's what you need to be like. It's a very simple process. It's a two-step process, and after this, I, after this I'll actually show you uh, in, in action. First is we're going to deliver high-quality content for free. So no strings, no sign-ups. We don't want no Facebook likes. They can just have the con content. So you're going, here you go, here's your, here's your free content, enjoy it. Step two is to actually deliver more high-quality free content. 
Now we can do this in a couple of ways. We can give them the, sec the second set of content for free as well. And say, here, no, have more content. If you'd like a third bit of content, well, then you need to sign up and see some more. Or you can say, would you like um, some more free content? If you, like, if you liked what you saw in the first content, please sign up on the right or please sign up below. What we are ultimately trying to achieve is that the person has seen some of our content, they like it and they want to know more. They're really halfway to be engaged. And once we have them on the list, then we can give them more content. We can build a relationship, which we'll cover in a later part of this course. Once you've done this, you end up with a list of prospects who like what you've got, what you're doing. They like your content. They like your style and they want to know more. These prospects are what I've said all the way through. They're engaged. Uh, I couldn't really think of a better term to use. So here we are with a quick example. This is a squeeze page I did for list building debunked. So at the top, I've got the introduction and the introduction is exactly the same one you saw earlier, slightly worded differently, a um, few minutes long, and it just says what's in the course. Now down below it, I've added part one. Um, so I created a video from some of the slides and showed people one of the methods that we're talking about. Actually, I believe it was a previous version of this video. So down below, I've just down here, I've said three, the three simple steps. Watch the introduction above. Watch chapter one for free by clicking play below. If you like what you see and want to find out more, sorry, if you like what you see and want to find out how you can get list building debunked for less than the price of a pizza, enter your details on the right. So once, pe once people have come along, they've watched the, the introduction, they've watched part one. If they're interested in learning about list building, they'll sign up. If they're not interesting, interested then they won't sign up which is actually fine for us which is actually really fine for us because we're not going to be wasting their, their time maybe when we do another course later on about product creation or affiliate marketing then they'll be interested they'll sign up and they'll they'll get more information but at the moment they're not interested in list building so I haven't wasted their time and they're not gonna waste my time if, so and we still kept them as subscribers so it's that's the simple process the other way i could have done this was showed the introduction um maybe showed part one here and offered a another part of the course for once people sign up and you can do the same with content and reports now compare that to the normal way that people build a list so here we are at a typical download page. All I did, I went to uh, Google and typed in affiliate marketing free report. So we got a standard download page. Click on this and I need to, it says I need to sign up to get the, the free video or whatever it is. Um, now think about, just think about this for a second. Right, this moment in time, I don't know what this guy's got to offer. Um, I'm not engaged, engaged, I'm not responsive. I might enter the email address here, um, click get instant access. Something might happen that I don't have to go out or I might forget and I might forget to confirm my email. And I've, if I get it, I've got, I've got his free report. Okay, all he knows about me is I've got an in interest in affiliate marketing. Now he's got to go and he's got to really start to build a relationship. Um, he might just be one of the marketers who will send me report um, offer after offer. I don't know. I might get all the information I need from him from that one report. And I've got nothing. There's nothing else I need from him. Now, if he was to give me, say, half this report or the first couple of chapters of it and... I read through it, found I liked it, 
I'd then be more engaged if I, when I signed up, he'd have more of a chance of selling to me a uh, lot sooner and a lot easier because because he already knows that I like what I'm seeing. So just think about that for a while. Um, it, I probably didn't explain it the best way, but it does make a lot of sense when you look at it. And so try and rather than just get general prospects, try and build targeted prospects who actually want to know more and want to know what, what you're all about. This chapter is probably the most important chapter of the whole course. Now, strangely, it's not actually about list building. Um, this is really about what happens after you build your list. Uh, but I thought I would include it as it's just so important. It's the most important thing. It's the most important aspect uh, about your list. If you don't build a relationship, you might as well not bother. How you build your relationship with your list is via communication. Now you do this by various different uh, methods. I'll show you one uh, later on in this presentation. However, the best way I find of doing it is introducing yourself to your customers, tell them about your business, tell them anecdotes, tell them stories about your life, um, share problems. If you're having problems, I can bet they're having problems. Um, one of my most successful emails ever, which we'll look at in a minute, was about a problem I had, uh, why I couldn't sleep. I got an email from a marketer selling a course and the whole email uh, talked about how he ran out of petrol. Uh, down a country lane and had to walk for four or five miles before he could get back to uh, somewhere to stay for the night because it was raining and it was just a fascinating story and I wanted to know more. So build your relationship by just opening up your life a little bit to your subscribers. And by doing that, you're going to get your subscribers to relate to you. Once they start to relate to you, they'll open more of your emails they'll buy more of your products and they'll follow more of your recommendations. One big thing I need to tell you though, that communication is not about selling. Um, if you're selling pe to people, you're not, communi you're, not, you're not communicating with them properly. So try and do as little selling as possible within your emails. Send them to blog posts, send them to videos, um, Include a link. If you'd like to know more, go here. Don't spend the whole e email trying to sell a product. Once you have built a good relationship, after you've sent four or five or six really good emails and introduced yourself to the subscribers, then yes, you can start um, maybe selling a little, but these marketers who send out offer after offer after offer after offer they're they're doing something fundamentally wrong the unsubscribe rate on my list is very very low i do get one or two whenever i send an email out i will get one or two people unsubscribe i think the maximum um was about five something like that at any one time now i know marketers who are getting 200 300 people unsubscribe when they're sending emails out because they're just promoting the same stuff that everyone else is promoting. So don't do that. And try and bear in mind that if you're selling, you're not really communicating effectively. This is something that I've mentioned elsewhere in the course and I mention it again. Your relationship with your subscriber is the asset. The list itself is not an asset. You can have a hundred thousand people on a list and if they're tired of hearing from you because you're promoting all the time, it's not an asset. If you have a list of 150 people and you have a good relationship with them, then that is your asset. People buy from people they like. If you're walking down the street and 
someone comes up to you and tries to sell you something, if you don't know them and don't like them, you're unlikely to buy. People don't really buy from strangers. Um, so what we need to do is provide quality information. Give tips, give advice. Also, whilst doing that, let people know about your core beliefs and your values. Let them know if you're a family man. Let them know if you're big, in, big into sports. And the people who you relate to most, people who will relate to you most, will share some of your your beliefs and values. They'll be from the same tribe as you. Um, if you were doing local marketing in, say, Vancouver, and you talked about your love of the local ice hockey team, then the people in that town who like ice hockey will listen, to, will more readily listen to you than somebody who has got no interest in ice hockey. It's worth getting to know who your subscribers are as well, what their demographics are, where they're from, what, what motivates them. This is an email I sent out. And this is just to show you um, the format of how I format my emails. You'll notice there's lots of white space and the links are spread through the email. This was quite a long email. Um, and we'll look at it again, a little bit more depth in a moment, as I said. Um, but you'll see each paragraph is no longer than three lines. And I keep them short, I keep lots of gaps between them. So they actually look um, it looks quite inviting. It's not just huge blocks of text um, because people look at huge blocks, blocks of text and go, oh, I can't be bothered reading it. But if it's short and snappy, they can just read a paragraph just by glancing at it. And you'll notice at the top, I've got my name in square brackets. Whenever I send an email out, I always put my name up there because then they know it's from me and they're more likely to open it uh, rather than thinking it's just some other, some spam that's come out. Once you've built your relationship, you can always stick your name there because people are waiting for emails from you. I get emails from people saying, oh, I was wondering why you hadn't emailed me recently. Is everything OK? So that's a good relationship to have. And then you see a snappy header. We'll look at that more in depth in a couple of minutes. Right. So this is the basic email. And what I did here was I talked about um, how I used to, used to do lay awake at night being scared that my AdSense account would clo close down because it was my only source of income at the time. And so I just told people that story and I put a link to a video about it. And so in the video, I talked about it and talked a little bit more, but I gave them the outline in the email. Now you see it's a little bit in red at the bottom. That's this is a really good device for getting people to look forward to your next email. So what I've done, just, well, I'll read the, the paragraph above it. At that time, the income from AdSense was paying for our food and most of our rent. Losing it would have been a major setback to say the least. And then I've injected this one paragraph. As it happened, the income from AdSense quickly became irrelevant thanks to two simple 400 word articles, but more of that in my next email. And then I continue the email. Now that paragraph wouldn't normally have been read. It'd just be the exact same text. But what that does is it's a bit of a hook. It's something that was developed by um, Andre Chaperon. And it's called the soap opera sequence. And it's just like all the soap operas you watch on TV. They never, they always finish on a cliffhanger. And he's got other little pieces called open loops and closed loops. Um, very, very technical. But this is should get you going and keeping people wanting, waiting for your emails. Now I mentioned that they have a, a snappy header. I think I said a good if you have a good title in emails, you're going to get more opens. So on this page, you can see I've got six different uh, titles. The ones on the left are what I would call good ones. So why you don't need Google anymore. That's one I've I've used recently. Um, don't let don't let this happen to you. Curiosity. Why 99% of people get affiliate marketing wrong. Once again, curiosity. Please, please, please avoid the ones on the right. 
re your payment is ready. I've got loads of those and they just go straight in the spam bin, not interested anymore. Um, re indicates that it's part of a conversation. Well, it's just the first email, so it shouldn't, re shouldn't be there. Uh, the other one is your affiliate payment. And then they go on to talk about something else. And the one at the bottom is one I received about two or three months ago. And I've never looked at one email from the market that sent it out. And I'll never subscribe to any of his lists. Just because the header said, $97 has been paid to your PayPal account. So I opened the email and it said, wouldn't you like to receive emails like this every day? And sorry, not interested. Um, I just really don't like these types of uh, spam titles. So please don't use them. In a moment, we're going to, I'm going to look at a video um, that I've done of a series of emails I received from a marketer. And he sort of got it very wrong. He started off really well, but then he's just started sending way too many emails. And the emails weren't structured and there was no plan to them. So before I do that, I just want to just have a quick mention about this. This is auto autoresponderbadness.net. This is a product written by Andre Chaperon. It is without a doubt the best product about writing emails that you'll find anywhere today. I don't know if you can see on the right hand side, one of his um, testimonials is from Ryan Dice, who says, seriously, it's the best course I've gone through all year. I'm only on day nine. Ryan's absolutely 100% true, true there. It's a six week email training course and each week, each few days you get an email from Andre talking about how to communicate with your list. It's great having a list, but if you can't communicate with them, then you're pretty much wasting time. So pop along to autoresponderbandits.net, have a look at it. It might, it won't be for everyone, but some people, but for some people it will completely change your email marketing. I can't recommend it highly enough. If you do go there and you do buy it, drop me an email and we'll set up a half hour, an hour, uh, one to one Skype chat and I'll go through how I use it and how I build lists. And I'll actually take you through my whole uh, list building system if you want. That's just an offer there if you like it. Um, I don't normally promote stuff, but really, this really is um, something very special. And we've got, I've got members of WordPress Goldmine, my um, forum, who have bought it and not one of them has anything bad to say about it and it's really really working some pretty st strong miracles with some of their marketing so anyway onwards now i'm going to show you a video of uh, a series of emails i got that were almost right but in the end quite wrong In this part of the course, I want to look at a, some. I want to look at an email sequence, and it's what I call the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I bought a WSO from Jay Boyer uh, recently, who's one of the most prolific WSO producers around at the moment. He's only been in IM uh, just about a year and a half, and I bought this. You can see here, I bought this WSO about. Let me just adjust this for you. I bought this WSO that was about the Warrior Plus system uh, to see if I could learn anything I didn't already know. And that was on June the 12th. Now, I immediately got an email from them and it, this is what I call the good. It's a really good introductory email Tell me all about him. Um, and so he's starting to build a relationship here with me, which was absolutely brilliant. Love it. It was really good. Good start. Now, if I go back, see that was June the 12th. Um, the same day, which was, let me have a look, I bought this at 12.21 a.m. I got that 12.23. Five hours later, I got an email about a, from him from about a Kindle publishing. Well, I'm not interested in Kindle, Kindle publishing. Um, so that wasn't 
very useful. And then there's another one here. I've got another email at 3.37 p.m. So about 15 hours later, still on the same day, uh, talking about the live training for the WSO that I, put, I bought. Perfect. So that, that ties in. The two emails in the middle, the, the foot email in the middle, really bad idea. Um, hit me up for a Kindle polishing um, webinar replay the minute after, the minute I've, well, virtually the minute I've actually purchased something. So that was, and then we had a fifth email on a Sunday, um, which was about the WSL that I purchased and the training again. So that, that's, that was a bit strange having that came out five minutes after the one before. So on the first day, I got five email from him. Next day, I got picked up another three. June the, th June the 13th, I got three. One at 12.32. One at 2.03 and one at 11.49. So in the space of 12 hours, I got three WSOs. One was a gift, which actually turned out to be, uh, I think I think that was an affiliate link in there. Um, I got something about offline marketing. Not something I'm interested in. I've got no interest in it whatsoever. Uh, next was a new WSO. Okay, so at this point I'm starting to like, think, bloody hell, does this guy ever sleep? Then we've got next day, uh, June the 14th, we, we got one email then, that was, that's better. Um, that was about live training for offline client. So I've got no interest in offline client. So this is the problem you get when you don't segment your lists. Now, if he sent me an email um, saying, hey, look, I know you bought the Warrior Plus treasure map. Um, if, you ha if you happen to be interested in offline marketing as well, please subscribe to this list or please uh, indicate your interest here. So I shouldn't have been getting, if you'd done that, I wouldn't be getting all these offline uh, emails and thinking, this guy's really starting to annoy me now. Um, so June 15th, offline client. Um, June 15th, a, another email. Uh, June 16th, replay of the offline client. Uh, June seventeenth, new WSO. Now, I actually really like what the, some of the stuff that Jay produces, but these constant emails are really putting me off. So, I'm probably going to unsubscribe from his list, uh, which is a bit of a shame because I'm not going to see all the WSOs he's coming. So I'm, he's going to lose me as a client, due basically simply due to the fact that he's sending so many emails. Um, then we've got some other uh, 18th, 20th, 21st, and 24th. So he's, he's added a little bit of a gap here, but there's still four emails in a few days. And I've got two today. Oh, sorry, one last night and one today. One today is a WSO. And all the rest of these contained affiliate links of some kind or another. So if you if you can see what I'm getting at here, he started off really well, sending me a really good email, introducing himself. I thought, oh, this is a nice guy, I can relate to him. He's got kids. He started out um, a year ago, except and lots of his stuff was similar to me. So we, we immediately had a bit of a bond. Um, but then by not segmenting out or by not t asking me if I would like to receive emails on Kindle Publishing, what I, the way I would have done this would be in the introductory email, I would have had a link at the bottom that look, um, I've got some great resources for offline marketing. If you're interested, please go here or send them to my blog where they can sign up for a list on offline marketing, et cetera, et cetera. And then we got, then it further went slight, started to go wrong with the constant emails offering uh, affiliate products or with, a, with affiliate marketing. And 
in between affiliate marketing, he's got his own products. You really should try and stick to one sort of area. If, you, if you're creating a lot of products and Jay's creating a huge amount of products, uh, I think there's four WSOs in two weeks there. So he's really productive. He's bringing out WSO after WSO. Just focus on that. Leave that, that as your core business. Between the WSOs, if you feel the need to email people, do it. But email, email, email them advice. Warm them up for the next WSO. Warm, warm them up for the next WSO. Tell them what you're working on. Now, most of the people who, a lot of the people who uh, will have bought this course knew a week ago it was coming because I sent you out some content. So it warmed you up. You gave, you're aware that it was coming. Didn't email anything in between because I just want you focused on my products. I sound selfish and I, I'm also a bit aware I, I sound like I'm going to a bit of a rant against Jay. I'm not. Um, I'm just trying to use his him as, a, as, a, as an example of a good thing to do and then probably how it's sort of gone slightly wrong. Um, he, probably, he probably earns way more money from WSOs than I do, so probably I shouldn't really criticise too much, but I think he can actually do it much, much better and get a much um, better relationship with his list and he probably won't, won't burn off his list so quickly. Um, I actually hadn't opened most of these until just now when I was pre preparing for this. And you can see I still haven't opened quite a few of them. And that's the reason why, because there's so much constant emails from him. And if I wasn't going to be doing this course and I was like, I knew I was going to use this as an example, I would have probably um, unsubscribed a long time ago. Okay, so what to pick up there is segment your lists. If you've got widely varying products, make sure you tell the people your main list about it and then get them to go off and sign up for those. So the only people I'll really be emailing um, about the product is the people who have indicated that they're interested in it. I'll mention it in passing that it's live to the rest of the clients, but for the rest, for the people who have said, yes, they're interested, they're gonna get the first notice of it uh, they'll know when it's going live and they'll get the best possible offer on it. So that's it. A um, little bit of thought and I hope that made sense to you. Sorry I went off on a bit of a, of a rant. It wasn't meant to be a rant, um, but it was a little bit strange. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye. Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a list in seven days. I call this uh, how to build a list in seven days, but in reality, you could actually do this um, in a couple of days or even one day. So it's really, you're only just really held back by how you want to go ahead and do it and the speed that you work. Now, I make no apologies. I've actually mentioned this method in a couple of previous uh, products that I've created, but I'm putting it in here again because it does work. Uh, everyone who's tried it has come back to me and said that how well it's worked. And it's one of the easiest ways that I know to get a decent sized list uh, straight off the bat. You can have a list of 500 to 1,000 uh, at the end of the seven days. I had, I was quite lucky. Um, I had 4,000 people subscribe in the first couple of days and it went up to about almost 8,000 at the end of a week. And that's just from using this method. And I was discussing this last week with a friend of mine who's a fellow internet marketer. And he actually did this exact same thing uh, when he first started out about four or five years ago. He created the product, gave it to uh, another quite famous marketer and built his list from it. So we'll go through this now and you'll see just how simple it is. I call this the triple win method. And there's a couple of variations you can use and you'll see why I call it the triple win method at the end. First off, you need to decide, do you want a list of free um, prospects or general prospects or buyers? Now, although I much rather have targeted buyers, getting a list of um, 
general prospects or freebie seekers to start with can be quite useful. It can give you a little bit of leverage. Um, but I've had a little twist to this so that you get a mixture of both. You, you get buyers and you get um, general prospects. Right, so step one, very simple. This um, slide's full of um, really interesting graphics and videos, etc. Doesn't It doesn't need to be. Um, all you're gonna do, you're gonna create a little report. It can be anything. Um, I created about 40 or 50 page book. You don't have to do that. Uh, just something really useful. Something that's got in, a bit of insight, a bit of uh, in-depth knowledge and something that teaches something, something that's, and it's got to have value. So my personal uh, favorite is for report, but you could, you could also do a video series. Next, you're going to email out some marketers. Anybody whose list you're on, doesn't matter. Anyone you've, you've met in various forums, um, people whose products you've bought, and all you're going to do, you're going to offer them the report that you've created. Or I said video series. I do prefer reports because you can put, put uh, affiliate links in them. So you're going to offer them the report and tell them that you're going to inc include all their affiliate links in it. And that's all you need to do. And all that you tell them to do is they will send their subscribers to your download page or to your landing page, sign up and get the free report. Now you may be wondering why, why would anyone do this? Generally speaking, all marketers are either A, very busy, or B, lazy. And because of that, then anything that they can do to make their life easier, then they'll do. So if you come up with a really good report that they can give to their subscribers um, to build a bit of a, help build a relationship to their subscribers, they're willing to do. I mean, you could actually even, not even go as far as doing a report. Contact some marketers, offer a guest blog post. I try and do a blog post or two every week. Now, because I've been doing this course, I've had absolutely no time to do a blog post for the last couple of weeks. If some, someone had turned around to me and said, Mark, do you mind if I do a guest blog post and put a link to one of my free reports in it? I'd have said fine, because it's it helps me out. And, and then it's obviously going to help you out because people read, will read, read it and go to your site and hopefully download your product. And that's the type of thing where you've got to think of it. You're helping them out and they're going to, in return, send their subscribers to you. Other things you could do, um, let me think. You could create some content. Obviously, I've, I've got a WordPress goldmine forum. Uh, if you turned around to me and said, Mark, I've got this uh, series of videos, four videos showing you how to do something with WordPress. Would you mind posting them and then of putting a link to my download page? Fine, I do that without without question. As well as doing guest posts, you could write content for me or another marketer. I'm not, not trying to get you to all work and do stuff for me, but you could do content, offer content to someone in the same niche who in return, all, all they've got to do is include your link. There's so many ways of doing this. Remember, we're not trying to build massive, massive lists. I was lucky, I got 8,000, almost 8,000. Seriously, 300 people on the list is all you really need to get started. You can get started with a lot less than that. And we'll look at certain ways that you can leverage these lists later. Now, one little twist that I added to mine when I create the report and I sent it out to various marketers, I sent it out to, I think I sent out four or five emails and I had two people accept the offer uh, within an hour or so. So it was really that easy. What I added to it, it was a nice little twist, um, was I said that their subscribers could have 100% commission on selling the report. So it was selling for about $17. They got, and subscribers got 100% commission. Now you may ask yourself, why, why would I do something like that? Very, very easy. Those people were building me a list of buyers. So as well as the um, 8,000 people who, who got the book initially, I then got 2,000 people, I think, over the space of the next few months who actually bought the report. Great. I got, I got buyers and the people who sold it got uh, $17. Once again, win-win. So this is why I call this 
the triple win method. You win because you built your list. And actually, if you do it right, you're going to you get two lists. You're going to get your list of buyers and a list of general prospects. The marketer wins. They make sales, they make money via the affiliate links in the report. So they're happy. They also enhance their relationship with their list because they're giving some good quality free content uh, or they've got a good blog post. The customer wins as they get really good information and also they make they can make 100% commission. So they're really happy. I mean, just, just to re rewind, imagine if you had a, a blog and I turned up to, and you had quite a few subscribers and a lot of people read, read your blog and I turn up to you and say, look, I've read, I've written this um, blog post. Um, it's about um, a way to say it's a golf blog. It's about how to cure a bad slice. And in it, I recommend a very simple product. If you want to post this on your blog, I'm quite happy for you to add your affiliate link to it. All I ask is that you've got two links in it that link back to my report on curing your, your golf slice. Simple as that. Now you'd be pretty mad not to accept, accept that offer. You could, you've got a chance of making money and you're getting work done for you for free. So it's a very simple way of doing it and trust me, it works, try it. You'll be very surprised at how quickly this can help you build a list. I was just editing this uh, video and I came up with another idea that we can add to this method. In the Warrior Forum at the moment, you'll notice that the WSO section is getting very, very busy. And there's quite a selection of uh, marketers who are basically doing a WSO every week or two weeks. Now that's a lot of content and products they need to write. Now, if you can create a product and turn around to them and say, here's a product. Um, if you'd like to do a WSO with it, I'm quite happy just for the subscribers to go, the purchasers to, to go on my list and you keep the money or we'll split the money 50, 50, 70, 30, whatever. Negotiate with them. What you need, your main priority will be to get the buyers. And that, that will be a complete list of buyers you've got there. So you could use that method. Um, another one I've thought about um, in the I'm niche would be James Jones, every week he does a $7 special. Now imagine creating a product and giving it to James and say, here you go. You sell this at seven dollars. Obviously, you keep the money. All I need is the signups. Once again, that's a, a very simple way to start to build your list. The more you about you think you think about these things, the, the better it is. This even works really well in non-IM niches, simply because there's so few people creating products that, let's say, the niche is uh, how to conceive a baby boy. There's only about one or two products about that out there and information is quite limited. Now, if you went to, if you created a product and went to the top two or three blogs and said, I've got this free report, would you like to give it away? Um, I can stick your affiliate links in it. And I'm sure they would. And they're gonna be pretty stupid to turn down an offer of some good content in a niche where there's very, very few products. Once you've obviously got your lit list, then you can start marketing to it. So I really do hope you give this method a try. Just think out of the box a little bit and you can come up with lots of other alternatives and lots of ways of doing this. So uh, good luck with it. Thanks, bye. In this short video, I just want to provide you with a sort of step-by-step -step to creating your first list. The five aspects of this we'll look at is gonna be having a plan, building a list, building a relationship, build a buyer's list, and segmenting your lists. All of these have been covered in the earlier videos. So this is just trying to get it all in one place without all the additional little bits and pieces I was talking about. These are the five key points that you're gonna to have to follow. So first, let's have a look at having a plan. The idea of a plan is so that you don't go out, build a list, and then suddenly think, well, what am I gonna market? So sit down and decide what, how you want to use your list. Are you going to just promote affiliate offers? Are you just going to use it for product launches? Are you just going to use it for your own products? It's important that you consider all these things before you start. 
So for example, if I decide I'm going to build four products over the next uh, eight months, then I'll know roughly what the products are and I'll try and build a list around or targeted to those types of products. You also need to know why would somebody want to be on your list? So if I'm going to sign up for your list, what are you going to give me that no one else is doing and it's going to give me value? So that's a really good place to start. As I said, know in advance what you would be offering. Now, as part of your plan, don't be afraid to offer 100% commissions. If you offer 100% commissions, you're going to build a buyer's list. Uh, you won't make money from it, but you will probably pick up a lot of affiliates who will promote it for you. Next, possibly plan a series of low-cost products. Once you're selling low-cost products, it's always a good idea to have higher-cost products in the background that you can then sell to your buyers. For example, one-to-one -one coaching, uh, membership sites, um, mastermind groups. $197 top of the really high quality products. All those you should have as part of your plan. Now it doesn't matter if it's planned for six months, for a year, for two years, uh, or for three years. I'm currently just over halfway through a two year plan. And I sat down and worked out last year and I've got it mapped out and I'm sticking to it pretty well. Not 100%, but pretty well. Now, know what you're going to be you're offering. We mentioned this on the last slide. Now, it's really important. If you're going to be offering weight loss tips, say you're in a non-IM market and you're doing weight loss, you need to know that first before you start building your list, obviously, because you suddenly get a load of uh, people on your list who are into uh, bodybuilding and you suddenly change, decide to change tack halfway through. You're going to lose your list. And you also need to be sensible about this. Don't look for lists that, lists that are going to be too small. If it's really small micro niche, then it's probably not worth considering doing a list. On the other, on the other hand, if it's a massive, massive list, uh, ma if it's a massive niche, you need to work out are there any little sub niches. One of the things I hear all the time is, oh, I would never go into IM because in, I would never go into the IM niche because there's too much competition. No, there's not. Uh, the IM niche is so big, you can become a well-known expert in one particular area quite easy because it's, there's not a lot of talent targeting some, some of the different types of niches. Say, for example, website flipping. It's probably just three or four experts in website flipping. Um, so you could target that type of niche if it's something you know a lot about. Uh, just think what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and you'll and you'll pretty soon come up with lots of really useful niches. Once you have your plan in place and you know exactly what you do, then it's obviously time to build your list. So by now you should decide what type of list, list you're going to build, buyers, targeted, targeted or free list, or even a combination of all three. Uh, I know I've pushed strongly for doing targeted and buyers lists, but when you're starting out, free lists are an easy way to go to learn to learn um, the ropes. Where possible, go for targeted or buyers, but don't discount free completely, but just be aware of the weaknesses in building a free list. When you build a list, you got to remember the number of people on your list means absolutely nothing. You can have a hundred thousand people on a list and not be able to make a living out of it if you haven't built your relationship. What really means a lot is the number of buyers on your list. If you have a list with a lot of buyers, then a 1000 list of buyers will probably outsell your burnt out 100,000 list. So concentrate on looking after your list and looking after your buyers. Treat them how you want to be treated. If you have a large free list, use really insane offers to turn those buyers, those, sorry, to turn those prospects into buyers. For example, you can, if you have, 
have an old product that's ninety seven dollars or you buy the license to a ninety seven dollar product then by offering that to your list for five or six dollars you can turn a lot of your free or your pros general prospects into buyers and once they're a buyer if you treat them right they'll stay a buyer for a long time and finally sell low-cost products I can't re reiterate enough selling low-cost products is a great way to build a list next you've got once you've got your list you need to build a relationship if you don't build a relationship then you're not gonna make money out your list again try to be the go-to guy if one of your cu customers on your list has a problem you want them to email you and ask you wh what your advice some people get really f upset and fed up by getting emails from their subscribers I love it because it means that I've got a relationship with them and that they've got enough trust in me to ask me to help them out with their problems so one of the main things about building relationship is to give value give as much value as possible and don't sell to your list all the time if you do sell use a soft sell method send them to a blog post let them read all the information have a, then a link in there or a little video showing how you use something don't ram the sales down their throat all the time there's far too many marketers who are doing that at the moment and the subscribers are getting tired by doing it differently you're going to stand out finally segment your lists we looked at it earlier having a massive list where you don't know who's buyers and who's uh, just prospects is a recipe for disaster so as soon as somebody buys move them from your prospects list to your buyers list another way you can segment it for example there I've got AdSense WordPress plugins if you have a list of prospects and they signed up to your course or they could sign up for a, say a free report on website, website flipping if you send them a video about how to make money with AdSense get them to sign up to subscribe to a, uh, an AdSense list and when they subscribe to the AdSense list just take them off the general list if you remember within Aweber you can do that automatically so when they sign up for one list they can come off another list so then you can have a list of people who like AdSense and you can list of people who like WordPress and you have a list of people who actually don't mind buying plugins for WordPress and then when something comes up that might suit them rather than email the whole list and alienate people email the people who like WordPress email the people who like AdSense email the people who like WordPress plugins it helps keep your list far more responsive uh, because they're not getting emails about things that don't matter to them okay thank you bye